let's say a series of network shares, so file servers, computers in a data center. There may be a, a finance directory or an HR directory that exists on those servers. So you may want to go into there, identify types of files, so certain spreadsheets, like I said, company accounts previously, or certain Word documents may contain personal HR data, for example, and basically tagging them. So tagging them to say, this is sensitive, this can't go anywhere, or all people within our organization, you know, can't send these particular files to a USB drive, for example. And, you know, essentially fortifying your environment based on knowing what is important and knowing before the fact malicious or accidentally problematic actions with data. Now, the reason that that's a problem is people don't just have one file server in a, in a data center and personal data when it's in a file looks very different in different files. You know, there's no, we're not talking about structured data here. So structured data being much more like schematic. So things that are in databases, for example, generally are structured in kind of tables and rows and indexes. So easier to find types of data in unstructured data. So Word, Google documents, email, instant messaging exchanges. How are you supposed to possibly know what personal data is. Who can tell what financial data is versus somebody putting a shorthand phone number within a file, for example. So yes, with data loss prevention, you probably will block most quote unquote bad stuff. You know, the keeping the data in your environment. Massive problem with DLP is in doing that, you have so many false positives. If an executive urgently needs to ship a file to a supplier and they can't because it's been blocked by your DLP solution that says this is bad when it's not, I can tell you now, you don't need too many of those things to happen before people turn off your DLP solution or before they tune it to such a flexible level that it's basically letting everything in and out of the environment anyway. I often align it with kind of the evolution we've seen with anti-malware. So we used to have a world where everything was based on signatures. Everything was antivirus. You know, you had this DAT file, you updated a DAT file with known bad stuff and then stuff was blocked in your environment. And, you know, we saw this evolution where that wasn't working, where adversaries were essentially bypassing these signatures, creating new files, creating new tactics. And that's where we saw the evolution into kind of EDR or detection and response. And that's really what we've grown at Cyberhaven. That's really what we've built out there is relying much more on the context of a file. We're largely not concerned with the content of a file. We're much more concerned around its context, around you know, metadata sometimes gets a bad name in our industry, but that's what we're concerned about, where it came from, where it's going to, actions that happened on that file. Was somebody copying and pasting from something we care about to a location that we consider being risky, right? So if you're an incident responder, that's the information that you're interested in, right? That allows you to then paint a picture of, is this something I need to investigate? Is this something that's you know benign and happens as part of a user's day-to-day -day kind of roles and, and responsibilities? So that's really how we see lineage as being different. So if we have a file, we care about that file kind of on its, I suppose, cradle to grave, from its creation through to all kind of movement and manipulation in an environment. So thank you, I think, for saying it's too good to be true, but we, we do it because we're essentially a flight recorder. So I touched on EDR earlier and the way that certain EDR solutions work, but if you think about that from a data context, being able to trace all actions that happen on a file, and we would, we would base that on what we call data sets. So rather than saying Chris cares about this very specific type of Word document, we would say Chris cares about source code. Not even that, we're going more granular than that. Chris cares about these specific GitHub repos in our environment, right? And, and that's a very active use case that most customers have, right? I care about that repo. And if anybody is downloading content from that particular, um, I've used GitHub as an example, but maybe Salesforce or Snowflake or whatever it is, but we're downloading content and then we're doing something with it. Being able to track all actions that happen after that initial event is super powerful, right? And we can do a number of things. We can block, we can say David or you know users of a particular group are able to download um, content from that GitHub repo I mentioned, but others are not, or you are not allowed to then send that out via public email, but you can send it potentially to, I don't know, a SAST tool for analysis, for example.